right, we're going to get into RetroArc here, some tips and tricks, some of the basics for getting started. First thing we're going to do is open up the app from the NVIDIA Shield home screen. And we're going to map player one. This should work on any RetroArc, but some of these tips and tricks are specific to the NVIDIA Shield. Uh, so first thing, open up the player one here. Uh, it's going to automatically detect your controller. You're just going to go through, hit the highlighted control on your controller, press A to uh, activate, and then just hold down the button for two seconds and it'll map it. Go down and do every single button here. Uh, might be a little different for like the N64 controller. Uh, you're mapping the A and the B, and then you're also mapping two of the yellow buttons uh, to X and Y. And you're going to map it just like the Super Nintendo controller looks. Uh, and then for buttons that aren't there, because the controller doesn't have enough, you just skip right over those. Make sure when you get done with it, you're going to hit Save Profile. Uh, it's going to be super important. Every time you open the app, start the app, it's going to detect new controllers. If the profile saved, then no matter which slot it's in, first player, third player, uh, the controls will work. Uh, it's important to note that when you let a controller die, or it automatically turns off in the middle of the game, it's going to stop being player 2 and it's now going to be player 3 or 4, whatever the ne next in line. Uh, so you're just going to have to restart the app to set the controls right. But you don't have to restart the game to do that, so it works out fine. Uh, so we're almost done with all the controls here. Um, make sure we save the profile. It's important after you save, I'm going to make this mistake later in the video, forget to exit the app. You're going to need to go over to main menu and then at the bottom, there's quit RetroArc that will save all of the settings that you have already made. This profile save will save, but these hotkeys that I'm doing right now will not save. And that's what we're doing here. We are toggling uh, the menu. That's an important one to have on the hotkeys. Uh, the hotkey enable button, which allows you to start the hotkeys. Uh, now this is the load and the save state, two most important ones. So you can actually save your games. Uh, you get three at least three save states per game um, and then there's a ton of other ones here rewind you can go back if you make a mistake fast forward move through some of those older games with long cutscenes. the shaders change how the games look some of these older games like super nintendo look kind of cool with a nice shader on them fps meter most of these are self-explanatory so i'm not going to stop and go over them all make the video extremely long. Instead, we're just gonna get straight into the playlists. Uh, we're gonna delete a playlist real quick, the Super Nintendo one specifically, don't worry, we're gonna bring it back, but this can be important if you got a new system that has uh, a, a link in RetroArch to some of the old playlists from someone else's hard drive, so you can see the games that you might have or might not, and, but you try to start them and then they don't open because that hard drive doesn't exist anymore So you need to clean these playlists out So I'm going to show you how to do that or perhaps you changed games and deleted some and you don't want them to show up anymore So we're going to go down to the Super Nintendo under the playlist and hit delete And we're going to scan it again after this so it shows up um, We're just going to go down to import content first. I'm going to show you that it's not here anymore No more Super Nintendo in the list go down to import content, scan directory, um, and we're going to find it in the proper folder. Now this folder already has the Super Nintendo games in it. We're going to go over at the end how you can put them there. Uh, so for right now, we're just going to assume that they're already in the proper folder and we're just going to scan it again. You can also do scan file instead of scan directory. And uh, if you want to scan an individual game, like some of our Super Nintendo games don't show up when we scan them like this. I'm not sure why. So you can go in and hit scan file, find that game specifically, and then scan it, oh, and it'll show up. Alright, so we're going to go down to the N64 games here, and we are going to set the core association, show you what can happen if you have the wrong core. Uh, I don't know why they don't delete this one, but when you start it, it closes the app, so very annoying. Uh, you might think that the N64 games don't run, uh, especially since it's the first one on the list, less 2, you'd think... Maybe two's, I don't know, three is a higher number. But GLESS 3, if you change your N64 core association, now this isn't the case for most games. Most of them, all the cores work in some manner, but for N64 specifically, you need to choose the second option here. And when you run the game, it'll open now. Uh, we're obviously not gonna play. Uh, I'm just gonna show you that it gets here. We could get to the title screen if we wanted to. Uh, and I'm gonna back out. This will interrupt our scan of the Super Nintendo games, but that's alright. Uh, we can scan them at some other time. 
uh, and we're gonna go into uh, redoing the hotkeys because we forgot to save it here and we're supposed to save so we're gonna go back into input re-put our hotkeys in um, and then this time we're gonna quit out of RetroArch as I mentioned before and that will let us save these into net play after this which is super awesome thing with RetroArch uh, especially since it works over all the RetroArch servers so you don't have to be on the Nvidia Shield to play with other people on the Nvidia Shield uh, you can open up netplay netplay here and hit uh, refresh the list as long as you're connected to Wi-Fi already and you look here you see the games people are playing uh, uh, battle cars uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, and you can join in with someone I think someone was playing uh, Legend of Mana so RPGs uh, lots of arcade games in there um, great way to to just play with someone online uh, have a friend that you want to play with uh, I think they have a little bit of communication you can do via text in the wire in game. So pretty fun way to play. Uh, easy way to play with your friends like that too. Uh, if you're not in the same location, as long as you have RetroArch, you can play. Um, so we're going to look at editing the theme really quick. It's the last thing. We've edited the theme here. And you can change how it looks. If you want to change that, we're going to change it back real quick. You're going to settings, down to user interface. And we're gonna hit the menu, Ozone, which is our original theme. You gotta go back and exit on main menu, quit RetroArch, and that will save the theme. And we're gonna keep this old theme. I like this one, but there's a couple that are kind of interesting. I think uh, changing the color on this one is better under appearance. So we're gonna just pick one of these here, choose it, and we're gonna move over to the PC end of things. Uh, where we're accessing the network through our NVIDIA Shield and another computer that's connected to the same network. It sounds a little bit confusing. We linked the video below. It's not, not that difficult at all. There's one setting you change and we're gonna enter in the IP address that it gives us for our Shield and that will allow us to connect to the, uh, the files and folders on the hard drive that is set as the Shield storage device. So that is going to let us drag and drop games that we want to put in here, making things uh, simpler, but they take a little bit longer to, uh, to send than if you had just had a regular, the old way was just you put the games on a hard drive, very easy to plug that hard drive into your computer, drag and drop the games from there, uh, whereas you're sending the games on a network now, which takes a little bit longer. Um, but it, it's definitely the happy medium with the uh, recent change, the, the update the Shield made that made it very difficult for all the apps to access the hard drive uh, with the games on them. So this makes it easier. You just set the hard drive as your storage device, access it through the network on your computer, and drag and drop the games that you want to add. Now we're also going to be putting the BIOS in for RetroArch. I have a folder here that has all my BIOS uh, files in it and then RetroArch you can access through uh, the shield folders there you find the RetroArch folder it's in the in main internal folder the very first folder that you get into and under the system file or the system folder in RetroArch you're gonna just dump all of your BIOS folders or files in there so I have them in a couple different folders here I'm gonna take them out of the folders put them all just straight into the system area and they'll be able to find them uh, pretty easy method uh, for dumping bio some of the other pro, uh, apps have a little bit more difficult but most of them aren't too hard just need to find the right spot to put the bios that's pretty much it uh, once we get these bios in there uh, nothing's going to change on the retro arc ends other than the fact that when they start up the games they're going to actually be able to access the bios files um, makes some of the games perform uh, decently better some of them no change super nintendo games are already running great so uh, still an important thing to do uh, you won't have to if you got a device from us, they'll already be done. The rest of the video you can see we're just messing with the music, the folder in the same RetroArch area and the uh, thumbnails folder where you can add thumbnails for the games. We don't include those, they take up a lot of space, you lose a lot of room for games. If you have tons of extra storage space, um, way more than the games that you have, uh, which is pretty difficult these days, but uh, you can dump all the files for the thumbnails in there and then when you're scrolling through the games you can see all the uh, original artwork. Pretty nice. Uh, good thing to have. And then the music will be background music for RetroArch.
while you're hanging out waiting to pick a game. And that's it. See ya.